where we will be breaking down the design concept of popular uh, url sorting services like uh, tiny url and bitly so this is our architecture diagram for tiny url clone so this component generates unique sort urls uh, we could use techniques like base64 encoding or hashing to achieve this the first step is always to clarify the requirements okay Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to dive deep into one of the system design concepts where we will be breaking down the design concept of popular uh, URL sorting services like uh, tinyurl and bit.ly, bit.ly. This is the second video of our system design playlist. So if you are an uh, aspiring system designer or, or tech enthusiast or preparing for an uh, system design interview, so this video will help you understand how to design a, a scalable, reliable and performant uh, url sortnet service like tiny url okay so this is the part one of our uh, tiny url design topic so where we will focus on the high level overview of the design so we'll go step by step using a structured approach so let's get started so we'll stick to our blueprint approach uh, for solving any system design problem at hand and the steps are this clarify requirements define components handle data man management ensure scalability and reliability plan for failure and optimizing performance so let's start with the step number one. So step number one is clarifying requirements. So whenever you start designing a system, right, the first step is always to clarify the requirements. Okay. So let's break down what a system like bit.ly or tiny URL needs to do. So there are some of the core functionalities that a URL shortener service needs to do, right? So the first core functionality is users input a long URL and the system generates a unique and shortened URL. And the second functionality will be he whenever the users visit the short, uh, shortened url uh, they should be redirected to the original url which are shortened right so these are about the core functional requirements now what are some of the non-functional requirements that it can uh, cover so the non-functional requirements are uh, the first one is scalability uh, the system should handle millions of users and billions of urls right so it should be scalable to that extent next point is reliability so no data loss and all the URLs should remain functional indefinitely, right? And that means if I've generated a shortened URL for a given URL, it should work even after months or years, okay? So that is about the reliability part. And the next point is high availability. Obviously the system should be up and running 24 into seven. And the next non-functional requirements can be low latency. So the redirection, uh, when you type in a shortened URL in the browser, the redirection to the actual URL or the original URL should be near instant, okay? So these are the some of the uh, requirements that needs to be done and make sure you gather these insights, okay, before you move forward. So now move on to the next step, step number two. Now that we have the requirements, it's time to define the components that are involved in a uh, tiny URL or bitly like system, okay? So we'll break the systems into the following components. The first component is the API server. Okay. So this layer will expose two main APIs. So one API will be for uh, URL shortening API where users submit the long URLs and it generates the unique shortened URL. Okay. And the next API will be a redirect API that takes the short URL and redirects the user to the long one or the original one. Okay. So next up is the URL shortening logic which will be a part of the API server obviously or the API server code. So this component generates unique sort URLs. Uh, we could use techniques like base64 encoding or hashing to achieve this. For this we will be creating a separate video. Okay. We will be discussing the uh, low level design of this sorting and redirection algorithms and logic. Okay. So the third component is uh, data storage. Obviously we need a place to store the mappings between the sort URL and the long URLs. Right? We will be needing a database. So this could be handled by a relational database or an OSQL database depending on the scalability needs. So the next component which will be requiring is the caching layer. Uh, for example, for high traffic URLs, uh, we'll cache mappings in an in-memory store like Redis to reduce database lookups. Okay, We'll combine all these components and design a final architecture for our uh, URL shortener uh, application. But first let's just discuss the components. <coughs> so the next component can be analytics and logging. Uh, this will be used to collect data on how often sort URLs are clicked right, or, or given URL is clicked and where the clicks are coming from and they are coming from which device. This data could be processed asynchronously uh, to avoid slowing down the system. And so this could be an optional thing to include in the architecture, but it is preferred to have an analytics and uh, logging layer in your uh, application. Okay. So the next uh, component that we'll be needing is the load balancer. So we'll need this to evenly distribute traffic across multiple instances of the API server, right? So with these components, we are now set to move ahead. 
okay now let's jump to the next point let me just change the slide now let's talk about how do we manage the data or how data management will work right so how do we store or retrieve our url mappings efficiently so this, this is one question that should come to our mind right so we have couple of options for smaller systems a relational database like mysql might be sufficient so we can create a table uh, with columns like uh, uh, sort url long url and created it information and store it in our sql database but for large scale systems where we will be uh, requiring to deal with billions millions or billions of urls right so a no sql database like mongodb or cassandra uh, can help with distributed storage and easier horizontal scaling now what do we mean by horizontal scaling that we'll discuss in a while okay now to ensure faster access to frequently used urls we integrate caching okay so services like redis or uh, memcache would store frequently requested urls in memory for quicker retrieval uh, which will avoid expensive database lookups okay so additionally we will use a ttl uh, or time to live for cache entries that we will be putting in the cache right so that they expire and uh, get refreshed periodically to avoid stale data now before we jump to the next steps let's discuss how do we join these components together to build a tiny url app okay so this is our architecture diagram for tiny, tiny url clone uh, if you see we have a i mean this is the user or the browser or the client then it connects to a load balancer which connects to api server and api server will query the cache, caching uh, server first to query for the uh, urls if it doesn't find then it will go for the database this is the overview of an architecture now let's answer the other points of our blueprint approach okay so the next point is how are we ensuring a scalability and reliability so this is one of the most important question and aspects of system design scalability and reliability okay to ensure the system can scale as the traffic grows here are some strategies okay the first strategy that we will be implementing is horizontal scaling so what do you mean by horizontal scaling so what we will do we will add more api servers and database replicas okay uh, to handle increasing load for example we can have uh, currently we have two instances of our api server right so we can have multiple number of api servers which will ensure that as the number of requests grows the system can scale out and uh, serve the application efficiently instead of hitting a bottleneck okay so the next technique that we can apply is the database adding so in database adding what we do we will split the data across different uh, database server instead of having all the data in a single database server we split them into multiple nodes okay so we can we can set the database based on the sort url has okay ensuring no single database node becomes a bottleneck or overwhelm okay so if you want to understand about database setting in details click on the i button above and uh, watch my video on database setting okay now the third technique that we can implement uh, for scalability and reliability is database replication so database replication ensures data redundancy for example these green nodes are the replicated nodes of this orange nodes right so so the data in this this orange node and the green node are exactly similar that's why uh, that's why this green one is a replica of this one similarly the data between this and this are exactly same so this is what replication means and in siding in brief this the data in this node and this node are not same okay they basically serve the different chunks of the database so that's why the data in this uh, sad nodes are different but the data in the replication node are same okay with the sad nodes so if one of the so what is the benefit of database replication so if one of the nodes fail for example let's say this node failed right this primary node failed this replica node can take over without any downtime so this ensures high availability okay so by by combining horizontal scaling siding and replication we make sure that our tiny url or bitly clone can handle a huge number of requests while maintaining data integrity and uh, become highly scalable okay now the next question that we should answer is how how are we planning for high availability and failure okay see no system is perfect right i mean and failures uh, failures are bound to happen in any system so that's why planning for failure is crucial okay here's how we will handle it the first strategy for handling high availability and failure is adding redundancy how do we add redundancy that is by replicating the databases and using multiple api server as you discussed earlier right we can have multiple uh, number of api server and similarly multiple uh, replica of our database nodes or that ensures redundancy and we ensure that even if one server goes down the system as a whole keeps running okay now the next technique that we should uh, focus on is failover mechanisms for example if our primary database uh, server goes down the backup can take over with the minimal dis disruption right so that's why the replication comes into picture okay 
Now, third technique will be to have proper data backups. So, regular backups are essential to recover from catastrophic failures like data corruption itself, right? Let's say all of the nodes fail. So, we have to be prepared for that scenario also, even if it's rare, but it can happen. So, in those cases, backups play an essential role. Now, the fourth technique to ensure high availability and failure is implementing rate limiting. So, to avoid overloading of the systems with malicious requests, we can implement rate limiting on our API servers, right? On our API side, we can implement rate limiting, ensuring that no single user can flood our system with multiple requests. In brief, rate limit is restricting how many requests a particular user can hit to a particular server in a given frame of time. So we can define a limit on that so that users won't send infinite number of requests to a particular server in a short period of time. So rate limiting will help us avoid the request flooding. Okay. So this strategy is in place. We can handle the failures gracefully and ensure our system stays available highly. Okay. So the next question that we need to answer is how are we planning for low latency and performance? So let's talk about performance optimization and low latency. So our system needs to be fast and efficient to provide a great user experience, right? So some key optimization techniques include, uh, you know, the first thing is caching. We have already discussed uh, that caching with Redis for uh, frequent URL lookups can be integrated in the architecture. So this significantly reduces database load and speeds up the redirection times. Okay. So, so our API server will first query our case server to check if a shortened URL already exists or not. If it exists well and good, it will send the response directly, which will be quite fast. If not, then it will query the database. Okay. Now the next technique uh, for optimization will be uh, implementing database indexing. So proper indexing uh, on the database ensures quick lookup times when searching for long URLs based on short URLs. Okay. So database indexing is a must thing. Okay. Now next optional uh, thing that we can include in our architecture is uh, analytics and logging and for this asynchronous processing is required. For example, for non-critical operations like analytics and logging, we can use message queues like Kafka or RabbitMQ. So this allows the main API to process URL shortening and redirection request without waiting for other tasks like logging and storing anal analytics and all. This kind of other tasks can be handled in a synchronous manner. So well, this is optional and we can integrate this based on our need. Okay. So the next thing we can include for low latency and performance is including a CDN or content delivery networks for global scalability. Using a CDN to cache the redirection request closer to the user's location ensures that faster response is achieved from the nearest caching server. So we'll discuss about CDNs in a separate video. So keep a tab on the i button above for update about it. Okay. So by applying these optimization techniques, we ensure that our tiny URL system performs quickly even under heavy traffic. Okay. So now we've answered all the three questions in a detailed manner. So that's a wrap. We've just gone through the process of designing a system like tiny URL, covering everything from clarifying requirements to optimizing performance. So system design is all about thinking through each component. Okay and ensuring that the system scales, stays reliable and can handle failures efficiently. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to discuss one of the main problem and the low level aspect of designing a um, URL shortener service like uh, tiny URL. And the uh, problem is what are the algorithms and techniques we can uh, use to shorten a URL. So stay tuned. So I hope you found this breakdown helpful. If you did, uh, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon. Uh, for more content like this and as always leave your comments if you have any questions about whatever we discussed just now put them in the comment section and i will be sure to answer them and also put your comments about the topics you would like us to cover in uh, in our future videos so we are targeting to reach 450 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting and don't forget to check out my other videos on system design in my channel so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one thank you